think the enterprise might have been the early adopter of these kinds of things. I mean, we've had contract workers uh, in the enterprise for many, many years. We've had contract freelance economies in the film industry for many, many years. So I think it's probably old news in the enterprise, but I think it's really big new news in the consumer space because people are building valuable lasting brands. When you start to trust that service, press a button on your smartphone to summon that resource or that, or, or that service, you're building a lot of uh, customer lifetime value and brand value uh, in the process. Well, I'll tell you my view as an investor because my firm invests in early stage companies and, and this is clearly a huge growth area. So we're really intrigued as investors in what's happening with local on-demand services with the, with the load economy. We, at the same time, scratch our heads a little bit and wonder about how sustainable it is for the actual freelance workers. Yeah. Ventures is a new fund that we created to exclusively fund what we call world positive startups. So companies that combine profit and purpose. And I don't mean social impact, I don't mean corporate philanthropy. What we really look for are companies where inherent in their product, with every dollar of revenue that they generate, they're naturally creating some environmental or social benefit. So we do a lot of work in the sustainability and renewable energy area. We do a lot of work in the health IT and health and wellness area. And last but not least, we invest in what we call people power companies like BreezeWorks that are building software to empower individuals to, to help small businesses grow. Uh, we think there's a lot of money to be made there. We think there's also a lot of positive impact we can deliver. That's great. Well, we look at two overall types of load companies. There are companies that allow consumers to share valuable resources. So think about Airbnb, where you have physical real estate that might be underutilized, and that's become an unbelievable platform for sharing that, those physical resources. You also have services that allow you to share human services. So whether it's a task rabbit to get someone to uh, assemble your IKEA furniture or a home joy to help you clean your apartment, you know, those are interesting platforms for services. And, and we think the most valuable companies are the ones that combine the two. So Uber uh, is the canonical example where you've got a physical resource, a vehicle, and you've got a human service, a driver, that come together on that platform, right? And so we think that there's going to be a whole lot more of those. There's a, a company presenting here today called Josephine that allows people to use their kitchens and prepare home-cooked food and basically sell it to their neighbors. And, that, and we think that's a, a, an interesting example. It does violate a whole bunch of food safety laws. Uh, but uh, we've seen with Uber that a lot of these load companies often break the existing regulatory framework and new laws have to come in place. Uh, to, to adapt and to understand these new services. Well, one of our favorite companies that we are an investor in is called BreezeWorks, and they've taken the smartphone revolution to build essentially enterprise quality software for scheduling, for estimates, for payments, for CRM, and put it all onto a mobile phone so that the smallest business or individual service provider can automate their business. So if you're a plumber, if you're a yoga teacher, if you're a handyman, electrician, you, know, you probably ran your business out of your pickup truck with a bunch of checks uh, and a rubber band on your, on your visor. Now you can actually use best of breed software that before just wasn't available to you. And so the individuals at the end of that local on-demand economy, we're seeing them get better software and tools to run their own business with companies like BreezeWorks. And one last